patrol car window getting smashed in. Steps the U.S. is announcing they are taking for the monkeypox vaccine. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We have new details in the deadly incident that happened along the Riverwalk last night. We now know the name of the suspect that is in custody. His name is Rafael Mata. San Antonio police received the call around 11 o'clock last night for an assault along the Riverwalk near South St. Mary's. Officers found a 65-year-old man unresponsive on the ground. He was later pronounced dead. Police say the victim and Mata were involved in an argument which led to Mata hitting the victim with his fists and causing the victim to fall to the ground, possibly striking his head. A man who was pretending to be a police officer accosted a man and pulled a knife on him. Now SAPD is looking to find this pseudo cop. The surveillance photos show a man was standing outside of a parking lot on the southwest side near Southwest Military Drive and Home Road. That's when apparently he began following a man who was going to his car. The victim says the suspect pulled out a knife and demanded to search the victim's bag while claiming to be a police officer. Somehow the witness was able to run the man off, but police are now looking for him. If you know who this person is or where officers can find him, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And taking a look outside, Ursula, the temperatures have been feeling wonderful, especially in the early morning. Uh, except for the humidity, bad, bad hair, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. The hairometer's off the charts again. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of humidity out there. But here's the good news. That humidity is going to lead to some showers and storms this afternoon. It is going to be hot today. Temperatures will be up near 100. Heat index values hotter than that. But we hope we get a cool down this evening, and we can already see some of that taking shape. You look at the top of your screen there. Notice we've got some showers and storms going across northern parts of the hill country. These clouds here likely building into more showers and storms. This is all going to shift south as we head into this evening, and we should get at least some downpours around the area. Bigger picture here, there is our weak frontal boundary, and that is what's kicking all of this activity off. Behind it, it is cooler. 69 in Lubbock with rain there, 78 Wichita Falls. We're still in the heat here, 91 degrees here in San Antonio at this hour. Here's how rain chances play out, I think. 3 p.m., just a 20% chance. But between five and nine, that's when our rain chances really start to kick up. 40% chance here in town, better chances in the hill country, and we've got more chances on the way too. Some good news there. We'll take a look at that forecast here in just a few minutes. What a change of faith. Thank you, Justin. There may be a long legal road ahead for three women who allegedly tried to speed away from a car in South Bear County from sheriff's deputies. That's right, Ursula. All three eventually were caught in West Bear County early this morning on Shanefield Road, not far from Wild Horse Parkway. As Katrina Reber reports, it marked the end of a wild encounter that also included a broken window on a patrol car. A call about an assault at a West Bear County home left the sheriff's deputy's SUV showing some scars. The deputy had just arrived around 3.30 this morning at the home on Round Ridge Street, where a woman allegedly beat her boyfriend with a mason jar. A sheriff's supervisor says the 18-year-old woman had called two friends to pick her up, and as they left, one of them smashed the back window on the deputy's patrol car. He went after them and called for help. You can tell from all the glass here in the street that that window took a beating and is in need of some major repairs. As for the man who was beaten, deputies tell us he suffered minor injuries. Another deputy, meanwhile, had spotted the car with the women on Shanefield Road and stopped it. But that apparently didn't stop one of them. Deputies say the 18-year-old involved in the assault also is to blame for this car ending up on the curb that she tried to get away again as they took her and her friends into custody. They say she was able to slip out of her handcuffs and jump behind the wheel. Ultimately, though, all three women got a ride to jail. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police say a man in his 20s is in critical condition after he was shot on the northwest side. Officers got the calls about the shots being fired in the 4000 block of Gardendale at around 945 last night. When police got there, they found a man in his mid to late 20s with several gunshot wounds, including one to his neck. SAPD says the gunman ran off from the scene after the shooting. They're still searching for him. That victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition.
And one man is dead after crossing a busy highway on the city's southwest side. According to San Antonio police, the man was crossing the highway when he was struck by a vehicle. This happened around 10 last night at the 8100 block of Southwest Loop 410. The man, believed to be in his 30s, was pronounced dead on the scene. The driver who hit the man with their vehicle took off before authorities arrived. Meantime, Selma investigators say they have arrested a man who is accused of threatening an employee with a stun gun and stealing Yeti coolers at an Academy Sports and Outdoor store. He is Michael Anthony Patino. Police say that the man was in the store at North Interstate 35 in Selma last week, grabbing Yeti coolers. He was about to leave without paying when an employee confronted him, and police say he pulled out a stun gun. That employee backed away. Patino, however, was arrested. Records show that he may be con connected to another robbery at an academy in San Antonio. This noon, the Travis County Sheriff's Office is still trying to find a 17-year-old who they say ran away from CPS custody in San Antonio. Alexis Sorrentino is believed to be in the Austin area and has ties to Jonestown and Lago Vista. Deputies believe Alexis may be endangered. TCSO says the girl is around 5 feet 2 inches tall and has brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with any, any information is asked to call 911. And the Biden ramping up its efforts against monkeypox. Today, U.S. health officials announced an additional 1.8 million doses of the monkeypox vaccine that will soon be available. They're also planning to make the vaccine available on site at a large scale, while close contact is the highest risk form of spreading the virus. The White House says groups, including college students, sports teams, and children at daycare centers could also become infected. More than 13,500 cases have now been found in the U.S. Currently, Bear County, there are 20 cases. And now to the shocking admission from the CDC that it failed to meet the moment of crisis as the COVID pandemic spread. Paul, after an investigation shows a repeatedly botched response to the coronavirus pandemic. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. The nation's top health agency admitting failures and promising change after a scathing internally initiated review revealed the CDC mishandled the coronavirus pandemic. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky saying the agency had prepared for 75 years for something like this, but that the performance did not reliably meet expectations. In a message to staff reviewed by ABC News, Walensky mincing no words, saying, to be frank, we are responsible for some pretty dramatic, pretty public mistakes, from testing to data to communications. As an agency, even with all the terrific work we do, we still suffer the consequences from these mistakes. Walensi herself called for that review, which found the CDC's recommendations throughout the crisis, from masking to vaccines, confusing and overwhelming. It's like contradicting. It's like a lot of stuff going on. Oh, don't do this, don't do that, and then you have to listen to both. The agency now making staffing moves, taking steps to speed up data releases, creating a more user-friendly website, and sharing information faster and in plain language, easy to understand. This all comes as the CDC now tries to tackle monkeypox, the agency already facing criticism for declaring the virus a public health emergency three months after the first known case in the U.S. These key steps that they've laid out really are critical, especially in the face of this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, this continued spread of monkeypox in the United States, and also a recent identification of a polio case in New York. These things are just reminders that public health emergencies will continue to pop up and CDC needs to be prepared. So far, no word on how long it will take to make the changes at the CDC identified in the report. Right now, there are more than 13,000 confirmed monkeypox cases across the country. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. More students returning to campus to start their new school year. And today it was freshmen at UIW making themselves at home on campus as move in day kicked off. This school says it's the biggest turnout the schools had since the pandemic began. Last couple of years, the move in days were pretty slow. But as always, some folks were happy, some sad, some nervous. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. I'm 
I'm scared. <laughs> like, just the change, living on campus and like first time in college. I'm a little nervous just because this will be her first time away from me. So, um, but other than that, I'm super proud of her, excited. Returning students will start moving in next in total close to on campus there. How a veteran was honored at St. Phillips College's Legacy Day. And the Dallas Cowboys offense got pushed around by the Los Angeles Chargers defense yesterday during practice. Larry has more later in sports. St. Philip's College is honoring its founding president by hosting a day full of events celebrating the past, the present, and the future of the college. Local leaders and neighbors celebrated the completion of state-of-the-art facilities and honored a military veteran who spent his days helping underserved communities, and he was honored. Tiffany Huertas has a look at Legacy Day and what it means to families. My father loved this tree on the property. This oak tree on St. Phillips College once stood in Colonel Roy Burley Sr.'s backyard. He played here uh, baseball, he climbed the tree, had big dreams. Burley Sr.'s family says he accomplished many achievements. He became a very decorated Army Colonel, a veteran of three wars. The college held a ceremony dedicating this tree. friends. Um, it means a lot to me. Burley Sr.'s family says giving back was part of his DNA. After retiring from the military, he helped the underserved community. He also started um, Bear County Opportunity Industrialization Center for job training and started the Diabetes Center and was on the served on the board as chair of the Bear County Hospital District. During today's Legacy Day, the college also honored other community leaders and celebrated the completion of different buildings, from a new health and wellness center to a technology facility with different learning labs. It was a special day for many, including the Burley family. He had such strong relationships all over the community. I mean, not just the east side, but all throughout, um, you know, San Antonio. And this was his home, and he just made it a better place, you know, while he was here on Earth. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. How quickly things turn around in the weather department we've been waiting for. A weather pattern to we're watching storms to our north. Some of those are going to work their way towards San Antonio this evening. Meantime, the aquifer is down two tenths of a foot to 633.8. In your pollen count, we have two today. Molds still high, 2430. Fall Elm shows up for the first time this season. We'll take a look at the radar and get you set for the rest of your Thursday coming up. Woke up super early this morning, set my alarm early, saying I'm going to beat the humidity and the heat and get some exercise. And boy. That sounds lovely. Kudos I, to you. I know you beat the heat a little bit, but that uh, humidity, I'm sure, I was still. It was just nothing but sweat. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it is so humid out there. Even in the morning, it's, yeah. you know, the humidity is really thick. Um, that doesn't change very much, I'll, I'll tell you that. But what does change is some of our afternoon high temperatures where we've been up near 100. It will not be as hot next couple of days, and that's due to the potential for rain, which I think we're all thankful for uh, after what has been a pretty brutal summer. Well, let's look at the satellite picture, and this shows us where we have some of those afternoon clouds starting to build, but it also shows where we've got some storms beginning to build to our north, and that's kind of the leading edge of, I think, some activity that will make its way eventually down towards San Antonio. More clouds across the hill country, and these are the kind of clouds that will bubble up into some showers and storms here over the next couple of hours. So let's look at that activity up there. That's along the frontal boundary and that frontal boundary is slowly going to sag to the south and that will happen throughout the afternoon. If we're going to see rain chances here in San Antonio, probably holds off until dinner time. At least that's the way it's looking right now. Let's walk you through that forecast. So this is two o'clock shows some of that activity up there to our north and then by 5 p.m. Uh, storms uh, getting a little bit closer to San Antonio. 40% chance of rain here in town, better chances to the north. And then by 8 p.m., storms beginning to move through. May push. Well, 
uh, the San Antonio, your rain chances are significantly lower today, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but as we get into tomorrow, there will be some more chances for rain. 30% chance on your Friday as this front kind of hangs around. And uh, even uh, through tomorrow night, we still could see a few showers and storms around the area. Here's how I think rain chances play out today. If you're up north, 60% chance. Pretty good odds. Here in San Antonio, again, 40% hit or miss downpours. And then a 20% uh, chance as you get south of Pleasanton. I, I will also point out that we could see a couple of isolated strong storms, not widespread severe weather, but any one of these storms could contain some gusty winds. So that will be something else we watch closely this evening. And of course, meteorologist Adam Kasky will have the latest at uh, 5, 6, and 10. Case at 12 hour forecast, 97 degrees at 3 o'clock, 30% chance at 4 p.m., and then a 40% chance, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. That's probably our window of best opportunity here in San Antonio and then a 30% chance going into tonight. As uh, we look outside for you, still mostly sunny here in San Antonio, 91 degrees, feels like 95. There's that humidity we were, we were talking about, 68 the dew point, so that translates to some of those pretty significant heat indices. 92, the current reading in Kerrville, 91 Hondo, 93 Pleasanton, 93 right now in Gonzales, and most of Bear County sitting in the low 90s at this hour. But it feels like 98 at Port SA, feels like 98 in Lotus, and you can, bet that these numbers will jump over 100. Those feels like numbers here very soon. And heat indices will range anywhere from 102 here in town to maybe 102 Forestville, 104 in Tegin. So just like yesterday, it is going to be awful hot outside. Meantime, in the tropics, we're also still watching this system, which right now is over land, but surprisingly does not look so bad. As it emerges into the Gulf of Mexico, there could be some development here. Hurricane Center is keeping close eye on this. Right now, just 30% chance of development, uh, but it could throw some moisture in our direction as we get into next week, which would only help our rain chances. In fact, it does look a little more active as we get into next week as some of that tropical moisture eventually makes its way into Texas. That's something else we'll be watching. But the seven day forecast shows that chance of storms late today, 30% chance tomorrow, small chances over the weekend. But next week, if everything comes together like it looks like it should, then we'd have some pretty good rain chances. Gary, what do you have for us, Larry? Yeah, wide receiver C.D. Lamb did not practice with the team yesterday in their joint practice session with the Chargers, and it's because he has a foot injury. He's also going to miss practice again today, so we'll tell you what's going on with his foot. Plus, Texans wide receiver Chris Moore is very impressed with quarterback Davis Mills. Coming up. excited to see him. He's the biggest thing I like to see too is his leadership and how he's really taking control of this offense and just stepped up and his showing that he's the leader of this offense. Texans wide receiver Chris Moore is another member of the offense impressed with how QB Davis Mills has taken command on that side of the ball in big board sports. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys began two days of dual workouts with the Chargers in Costa Mesa, Cali, and concern was high because CeeDee Lamb did not work out due to a foot injury. That's the last thing the Cowboys need, given the fact they're thin at that position, with Michael Gallup recovering from offseason ACL surgery and James Washington dealing with a foot injury from the first week in camp that could cost him up to 10 weeks. Add to that, Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson signing with Cleveland and Miami, respectively, and CeeDee can't afford to get hurt. But according to Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones, it's just a cut on his foot that required stitches, according to reports, but no one would say how he was injured. Jones also praised the running game, which has been emphasized this season, starting with Zeke. Definitely want to, you know, emphasize the run game and, you know, utilize uh, Tony and myself. Uh, you know, I think I think it would definitely wear us down a defense where you got two backs coming at you. And, uh, you know, if we if we can uh, run the ball efficiently and uh, control that line of scrimmage, we're going to be that much better of offense. Maybe one reason why the Cowboys often struggled against the Chargers D. They recently signed Derwin James to a four year, $76.5 million contract extension, making him the highest paid safety in NFL history. But USFL MVP, Kevontae Turpin, right there, is making some noise at wide receiver, made one of the big plays yesterday. But during a two minute drill, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense got shut down, first by linebacker Khalil Mack. And under pressure, Prescott gives up a pick after the pass bounced off Zeke. That was one of two interceptions by Dak, but the defense looked great, again led by linebacker Micah Parsons, who had more than one sack yesterday.
I think today we came out, really competed hard, especially made big strides from last week. I think everyone came out today. Um, it was great to have some of the guys back that might have set out last week. And, you know, I just felt like the energy was there, and that's kind of like the standard we need to play with every game this year. Linebacker Anthony Barr, who was signed by the Cowboys after eight seasons in Minnesota, worked out yesterday. Houston Texans wide receiver Chris Moore is entering his second season with the club. He played 12 games last season and produced a career high 22 catches for 227 yards and two touchdowns. As the Texans decided to keep Moore on the roster heading into 2022, he has got more work in with second year quarterback Davis Mills, who entered camp as the number one QB. Moore and Mills are working hard to get on the same page. It's a big thing. It's just timing. Our, our most offenses are, are based off timing and trust between the quarterback and receiver. Like he got to trust that I'm gonna be in the spot that he expects me to be, and I got to trust that he's gonna throw it there. So just just consist, consistently seeing each other be in those spots is is gonna help a lot. Game number two. All right. Well, thank you so much, Larry. Yep, you got it. More evidence that COVID is leaving long-term effects on those who were infected. We'll tell you more about these symptoms. This new A court battle is brewing over whether or not a search warrant executed on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate should be made public. The Justice Department, however, does not want it to be released. ABC's Zareen Shaw reports the former president disagrees and says he has nothing to hide. This afternoon, the Florida federal judge who approved the search warrant on former President Donald Trump's home will be hearing arguments from opposing sides on whether to unseal the affidavit that led to the raid. The federal judge's decision to authorize the search has been unsealed the document, citing the historic importance of these events. Even Trump has said he wants it released in the interest of transparency. The Justice Department filed its opposition to the release with the court, saying making it public would cause significant and irreparable damage to the current criminal investigation and likely chill future witness cooperation in this and would likely compromise future aspects of the investigation. If you release the probable cause affidavit, I'm not sure how they could go forward. The media organizations have asserted the redactions of sensitive information in the affidavit would address those DOJ concerns. The raid on Trump's home came after a subpoena had been issued to return documents he had removed from the White House. According to the DOJ, a total of 27 boxes were seized from his estate during the search, including 11 sets of the most highly classified information. Several Republicans and other Trump supporters have been expressing outrage against the FBI and DOJ since the search warrant was executed on Trump's home. Some online even threatening to physically harm the federal judge and members of the FBI, prompting former Vice President Mike Pence to say the threats of violence need to end. And these attacks on the FBI must stop. Calls to defund the FBI are just as wrong as calls to defund the police. Trump has called on the federal judge hearing the case to recuse himself. He highlighted political donations that he's made to Democrats, but this comes despite the fact that he has also made political donations to Republicans. It's unclear when the judge will make his decision. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Washington. And New Zealand police are now investigating after a family found two children's bodies in suitcases they purchased at an auction online. Authorities say they were alerted about the case last week when the South Auckland family reported finding human body parts in the items bought from a storage facility. The family is not connected to the children's deaths. Police say the children, likely between the ages of 5 and 10, may have been dead for three to four years. The storage company is assisting the police with their investigation. A man suspected of killing at least two Muslim men in New Mexico has been ordered to remain in custody. Mohammed Sayed appeared in court on Wednesday via video conference. Sayed is facing murder charges for the killing of the two Muslim men in Albuquerque in July and August. As well, he's the primary suspect in two other killings over the past several months. The judge said Sayed would pose a threat to the community if released from jail ahead of his trial. His son, Sahin, is also in custody. He's accused of lying to investigators about the killings connected to his father. Russia is bringing back its mother heroin award in an attempt to fight the country's
Houston says women with over 10 children can get nearly $17,000. The mother heroin was first used by then President Joseph Stalin after World War II, which is when the Soviet population dropped by 42 million people. In addition to the mother heroin designation, the Kremlin is also focused on promoting traditional values. Russia has lost about 86,000 residents since January. Taking a look outside with live cam. Ooh, I'm seeing more clouds. Is more that clouds and 93 degrees? 93, Ooh. hot and humid. You can actually see some of those storms building yeah, there in the background. That. We're looking north in this case, and yes, there are some storms starting to build. We can see those on radar. They're not super close to San Antonio, but they will make their way down here, we think, eventually this evening. So let's get right to live radar, and we'll show you where those storms are. Up around the Brady area, and uh, parts of the hill country uh, as you look up towards the austin area we're seeing some showers and storms and these will continue again to make their way south seeing a lot of lightning strikes with these too and this is along a boundary that uh, is slowly sinking south we can zoom in a little bit closer and uh, see some of this activity up around lano and mason at nothing severe but just some good rain and this will eventually make its way down marble falls and along 281 at Fredericksburg and some of our northern counties here will be the first to see some of those showers and storms. And eventually we think San Antonio could see some activity by dinner time. And as we head into uh, this evening hour, the, the evening hours and nighttime hours as well, we're going to keep tabs on this. We have more on this forecast and we'll time it out for you coming up here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. These hot, dry drought conditions aren't exclusive to South Texas. It is actually an issue in England right now. As a result, the UK's environment and farming organizations are now banding together to urge government officials to prioritize how water resources should be used. This is coming on the heels of an official announcement that large areas of drought the National Farmers Union calling for priority usage of water to be given to food production and environmental protection. Greenpeace UK also wants officials to switch from fossil fuels to green energy as quickly as possible. Loss of taste and smell, body aches, depression, fatigue. These are just a few symptoms of long COVID, a condition that women may be at higher risk for. With more, here's ABC's Faith Abube. Women may be at higher risk of developing long COVID. Long COVID describes a collection of symptoms that may remain for weeks or even longer after the initial onset of COVID symptoms. Researchers at Johnson & Johnson analyzed data from about 1.3 million patients. They found that women were 22% more likely to throat, mood, the nervous and GI systems, and skin conditions. Men, on the other hand, were more likely to experience long-term problems with their blood sugars and with their kidneys. The researchers suggest that disparities in access to care could affect the course of these conditions, leading to more long-term complications. If you think you may have long-term health issues after having a COVID-19 infection, talk to your health care provider. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abube, ABC News. Ice cream may be a little bit healthier for you, uh, at least versus a um And the San Antonio Mission scored a lot of runs last night, and Brandon Dixon led the way with a monster game. Larry has more later in sports. It is one singular sensation you should see at the Woodlawn Theater. We are going backstage to a chorus line. Theater is bringing back a Broadway classic to life, a chorus line. It's just a story about a ton of dancers coming together, auditioning for something that they all really want. Every single character is relatable. There is going to be something that every single person in the line says that you're going to relate to, 
um, understand, know that somebody else has gone through that, or know somebody else that's just like that character. And it's very, very heartwarming. It's very, it's just entertaining. Paul's a dream role for me because it's very closely related to my personal life. And now I'm at the same age as Paul. It's great to get to tell his story on stage because it feels like I'm getting to be myself 100%. God, I hope you get your tickets to see this performance. For show dates and times, head to KSAT.com. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. It is National Lemonade Day coming up on August 20th, and Chipotle has found a very unusual way to celebrate it. Unusual indeed, and for a limited time, starting Thursday, fans of the Mexican fast casual chain can buy a lemonade-scented candle in a Chipotle water cup. Hmm. Chipotle says it's for their customers who ask for a complimentary water cup and then fill it with lemonade instead. The promotional candles are available only on Chipotle's website and they cost $28. Now here's some good news. If you're trying to maintain a healthy diet and you have a sweet tooth. That's right. A new study suggests that ice cream is actually better for you than multigrain bagels. Researchers at Tufts University rank the nutrition of various foods on a scale of 1 to 100. The school says the higher the score, the healthier the food is. A cone with nuts and chocolate ice cream scored a 37. But a multigrain bagel with raisins got a 19. And saltine crackers, they got a 7. Wow. But yes. when you're not feeling well, there's nothing like a saltine cracker. You got to stay away from the saltine crackers, but they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the bagels, as long as you put enough cream cheese on there, that makes it even better, right? <laughs> yeah, it's healthier, course. right? Well, then it's like ice cream. Exactly. That's my theory anyway. Uh, 91 degrees so far today. 96 is the average high. We will be above average today. The record is 105. Thankfully, I don't think we get there. We're going to start seeing those uh, temperatures, though, cool a little bit thanks to some rain chance. This is another look at that seven day forecast it's coming up. Normally, when we have a drought breaking incident, it's feast or famine. We go from mm -hmm. no rain to way too much, but it seems as though we're getting some intervals of rain to kind of break this drought quietly. We're chipping away at it, okay? Uh, th there doesn't look like there's going to be anything that's going to get us out of this big hole that we're in because we're down 14 inches from average, but uh, we're chipping away at it. And I think we've got some more opportunities coming up to uh, sort of uh, keep this drought from getting out of hand. I mean, it pretty much is already out of hand, but we're seeing some improvement. As you get south of San Antonio, that rain earlier did chip away a little bit at the, ex the exceptional drought. Places like Pearsall, Pleasanton, and La Prior who were in exceptional drought last week, now in extreme drought, which is still a bad situation, but better than it was. San Antonio sits inside that exceptional drought area, and so we need some rain. There is, again, some in the forecast. And as we look at Medina Lake, down to 9%. It is 73 feet down compared to the conservation pool in the three-month change, down 15 feet. So it is still in very bad shape. Uh, time lapse shows we had just a few clouds this morning and then uh, you can see some of those clouds starting to uh, build as we head into the afternoon. 91 degrees at the airport, calm winds, humidity is at 47 percent and as we look north we can see those clouds really starting to build so skies will go from mostly sunny to likely partly cloudy as we head later into today and some of those clouds are already building up into some showers and storms as you get uh, north of our viewing area and west of Austin. Uh, some pretty heavy storms, in fact, and these aren't moving all that much. That's along that boundary we've been talking about. But I do think this slides a little bit further south. And as we get into this evening, we'll have some opportunities here locally to get some rain. 92 New Braunfels, 91 Hondo, 90 in Uvalde, 89 in Del Rio. And here around Bear County, mainly low 90s here. And heat indices are much higher than that because there's a lot of humidity in the atmosphere. 98, the current temperature that feels like number 102 is uh, what we're forecasting uh, as we get later into today. I should say 98 is the forecast high temperature, 102 the forecast heat index later this afternoon. So it is going to be a lot like yesterday where it is going to be very toasty and very humid by the afternoon hours. So here's what the forecast looks like by 2 o'clock. Showers and storms still to our north by 5 o'clock. They build a little further south, 40% chance. At this point, may still be north of San Antonio, but then these storms 
begin to work through this evening. Not everyone will get rain. This is still a hit or miss type situation, but there should be some good downpours around the area. And we could see some gusty winds too with some of the stronger storms, although we're not expecting a lot of severe weather. By tomorrow morning, just some clouds to start, and then by the afternoon, another chance as this front's still hanging around. It kind of washes out, but it gives us a chance for a few more showers and storms, 30% on your Friday. Uh, here's how the chances play out today. 40% chance, yes, here in San Antonio. You go north, there's a 60% chance of rain this afternoon, and then lower chances uh, south of San Antonio. So it's just depends on where you are, but that frontal boundary likely hanging up just to the north of us. KSAT 12 hour forecast 97 at 3 o'clock, 98 by 5 p.m., 40% chance of rain through about 8, 9 o'clock, and then we'll start to bring the rain chances down as temperatures slip uh, into the 70s and 80s. That tropical system we've been talking about. develop much probably moves into Mexico, but it does throw some moisture in our direction. And I think that helps us with rain chances next week. So chance this evening, chances tomorrow. Saturday looks fairly quiet, but we'll get uh, some hopefully better rain coming up next week. We'll keep you posted there, guys. Thank Good you, looking Justin. forecast. Thank you. Yeah. Well, now to the world of sports, mm -hmm. our subject matter expert, Larry. I know we're <laughs> going to be talking Astros and, of course, a highly anticipated schedule. Yes, the Spurs, the Spurs just released their 50th anniversary schedule uh, late yesterday. And one of the games this season will be back at the Alamo Dome. A young Keldon Johnson is excited that he's going to get to play some ball there. And in the big leagues, the Astros are feeling pretty good about themselves. Coming up. Spurs are getting ready for a season-long celebration, and rightfully so. They announced their 50th anniversary season schedule. The Silver and Black will start off the season on Wednesday, October 19th against the Charlotte Hornets, when the franchise will honor Manu Ginobili's 2022 Basketball Hall of Fame induction. Manu will be on hand as his jersey and the rafters of the AT&T Center will be revealed with the Hall of Fame distinction at halftime. So they're their season opener, October 19th at the home of Charlotte. The LA Lakers come to town for back-to-back -to -back games November 25th and 26th at 7 p.m. Spurs will close out 2022 on December 31st at home of Dallas, and they will play at the Mavs April 9th in their regular season finale. Commemorating 50 years in San Antonio, time since 2002 where they'll host the defending NBA champion Golden State Warriors on Friday, January 13th. Fourth year forward Keldon Johnson is excited to play in the Dome. I think it's going to be great. I think, uh, you know, I think I think that one is going to be like, I feel like the most people are going to come out for that one because I feel like Alamo Dome is going to be so big, so packed. Um, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be dope, man. I'm, I'm excited. That, that one is going to be going to be great. Check out the Spurs out of market and regional games this season. December 17th, they'll play the Miami Heat in Mexico City. January 13th is the Alamo Dome game against Golden State. Then on April 6th and 8th, the Spurs will play at the Moody Center in Austin, where they take on Portland, followed by Minnesota. LeBron James has more than 97.1 million reasons to stay put in Los Angeles. The future Hall of Fame basketball star inked a two-year extension deal worth that many dollars with the Lakers. The agreement also features a player option for the 2024-25 five season, which allows James to opt out of the last year of the contract if he so chooses. James, who is officially a billionaire, is now the highest paid player in NBA history in terms of salary. Chicago White Sox hosting the Houston Astros yesterday and looking to stop their two game slide. Top of the fourth, Astros up 2-0. Two, two away when Chaz McCormick lines one to right field, scoring Kyle Tucker as the Astros extend their lead. Now, unlike the first two games of the series, the Astros held on to their lead and they beat the White Sox 3-2 to get back in the win column. They'll wrap up that four game set this afternoon and the Oakland A's beat the Rangers 7-2. Missions infielder Brandon Dixon hit for the cycle at Northwest Arkansas last night becoming the eighth player in missions history to hit for the cycle. He went five for six with nine runs batted in. That ties the franchise record for RBI in one game, and it's the fourth straight game that Dixon has gone yard. The missions win a high scoring game, beating the Naturals 20 to 15. It's their first 20 run game since May 1st, 
2018. I needed a glossary for that story. A baseball <laughs> Way to go, Mrs. Right. We'll get together and you'll explain what yard is. There you go. And we'll keep talking horses while we were talking about <laughs> I know, the I was teaching stuff. him it's, horse stuff it's too during the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. We're going to head over to SA Live. What's going on? <laughs> hey, well, with all the kids heading back to school, you know that saving a buck can really make a difference, especially with kids' clothes. They grow so fast, right? Nicole Boynton, one of the co-founders of Hand Me Up, joins me with a fabulous little model there. And how can folks save big? That's really our goal. We want to use secondhand discounted clothes, put them in a capsule style mix and match bag for you so that you don't have to do any of the shopping yourself and you're getting a great price on kids' clothes. Love it. Okay, we'll have more for that in just a moment. Plus, you know, we want to see your back to school pictures. Be sure to share us. Share those with us at SA Life KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your kid or kids in the show. And of course, Jen is beating the heat inside uh, and putting the pedal to the metal. We're approaching one of the busiest birthday months of the year. Now, if you're looking for a place to host a party, we'll tell you how Andretti Indoor Karting and Games can help you out, and we may even hit the racetrack. That and more coming up. And you know what may grind your gears when someone cuts you off, so we are breaking out the rage at a mobile rage truck that lets you release your stress. And of course, uh, it's an easy to do total body workout. We've got you covered with that too. With of course, uh, a CrossFit gym that lets you work at your own pace. All that and more when SA Life continues in just a few minutes. If you have evening plans, keep that KSAT weather app handy. We'll keep you up to date if any uh, showers and storms do develop. And we think they will as we get into the evening hours. About a 40% chance of rain, 30% chance tomorrow. Meteorologist Adam Kasky will have the latest coming up tonight at 5 and 6. Otherwise, more rain chances next week. So this is an encouraging seven-day forecast, guys. It looks beautiful. Thank you, Justin. It sure does. And folks, thank you so much for joining us. Ursula, always a pleasure. Yes. And right now, we're heading on over to SA Live. All right, today on SA Live, it's an easy to do total body workout to get you started on your fitness goals. Plus, we are breaking out the rage. A mobile rage truck stop by the KSAP station and let our coworkers release some of their stress. Go karts, games, a scratch kitchen, and cocktails too. We'll tell you how you can plan your fall events here at Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. SA Live starts right now. <laughs> oh, look at Tom and Jen go. Pedal to the metal. Yes, hello. And happy Thursday. That is, of course, our Jen Tobias Drusky out at Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. We're going to see more from her in a little bit. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Well, Back to school is, of course, happening, and we want to make sure you get the most out of your dollar when you shop for back to school clothes. And guess what? You can help save the planet at the same time. Hand Me Up is where you can get thrifted clothes for a great price. And of course, I've got co founder of Hand Me Up, Carol Livingston, joining me right now with, of course, co founder Nicole Boynton over there to tell us about this business. Okay, such a cool concept. How can we help moms with back to school shopping? Yes, well, we're moms ourselves. And so we understand the back to school rush. It's so hectic. And so our goal is to help moms accomplish the back to school rush simple, easier. We want to save you time and money. And so what we do is we put together uh, what we call a capsule bag, which is basically just mix and match items of three tops, three bottoms, and then one bonus item. Um, and we ship it straight to your doorstep so moms can skip the lines at the thrift stores or even the shopping mall and they can spend their time doing the other stuff like making lunches and getting school supplies. Um, we really just want to take the burden off of moms during the season and help them get their kids in wardrobes that they can easily mix and match when they're getting themselves ready for school. And I love that it comes to you because even if you are a mom that loves thrifting, it takes time to do that and then you're digging and trying to find stuff still because it's yes, hit and miss it every is. time you go to any thrift store, all right? And we have an example of of one of the capsules also over there and our fabulous model. <laughs> is that Peyton? This is Peyton. Peyton, can you say hi? 
<laughs> yeah, so what we really do is we pick out kind of like a base color that we kind of work with to make the whole thing so that in the morning you can literally send your little one to their room and say, get dressed because all of the items are interchangeable. As you can see, the shirts go with all of the three bottoms that you're gonna get in your bag. And we do this for sizes zero, three months, all the way up to the bigger kids, size six, to save you time. I love it. And of course, just overall, just being more sustainable, right? Right. Okay, because there is so much waste as far as just new clothing. Yes. Okay. Um, what does, what are the replay items? What are those? So that is our upcycle line. Uh, we call it replay because these items are being used again. And everything in our replay line over here is handcrafted here in Texas from um, used kids clothes. So clothes that have reached the end of life um, that they can't do anything else with. So um, that's part of our whole process when we get clothes in is sort them into our different, either our capsule bag or our, our upcycle line. And we're seeing you guys hard at work, <laughs> you know, in this video. So what do you do with the clothes? that you get? I wish we worked that fast. <laughs> um, we basically sort them first into different piles um, and then we wash them all. And so basically if they're going to go back into our capsule bag, we have a certain pile for that and break them down into size. Um, and then after that we'll send them to our seamstresses who are local to make these beautiful handmade items. After that we intentionally donate to teen moms in our area so we don't donate without a name or a size. Um, and then we ship them off to um, recycling partners for the rest of it. So nothing goes in the trash that we get. Okay. and. Here is an example on the table of what your replay items that you were mentioning are, right? Yes, yes. And so that's what we call our pretty pouches, um, handmade by a local seamstress, Ruth and Esther. And so she's taken some cute, I think those were both girls' dresses, um, and made them into lined pouches that make a really awesome, sustainable gift option. Um, I think they make great teacher gifts. You can throw a gift card in them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and so then my favorite are the dolls over there too. So those are all handmade items um, out of kids' clothes. I love it. Okay. And what you know, what I love too is that it is easy. So when you yes. go to the website, walk me through. Say I'm, I'm trying to choose a capsule. Yes. Yeah, so what we do, we have a quiz available. So it's called our style quiz. So you'll choose what size, gender, and climate. So either hot or cold climate. And then you can fill out our style quiz. And then we take it from there and we will curate based on what color scheme you choose. And um, you can even go as far as to say things like no crazy patterns or no graphic tees. And we do our best to make sure that we get you the items you need that can be um, mixed and matched so you have an efficient wardrobe. Okay, and so people can just order off your website? Yes, absolutely. 24-7, okay. uh -huh. right? 24-7, <laughs> we work 24-7, never shuts down. <laughs> and how long have you guys been open? Um, our one year anniversary will be in September. Um, it's been in the works for a little bit longer than that, but we finally, you know, with kids of our own, we got it out the door last September. Um, so it hasn't even been a year yet, almost. So it's been really fun. Yes, we're happy to be a part of that. Okay, and um, what what's hot right now as far as what people are requesting? We, well, we've had a lot of hot weather clothes in San Antonio well, in particular, yeah. but we, humid, right? yeah. <laughs> I know. So like tank tops, shorts, and um, we're starting to see a transition to the colder weather. We do get a lot of people that order outside of Texas even. So um, we've had people order in Washington um, and some of the Northern states where they need the cold weather climate clothes more. So you um, do ship nationwide? We do nationwide, yes, absolutely. All right, and you have a discount for folks watching. We do. We have a back-to-school discount. So if you buy one of our capsule bags, you'll get the second bag half off. So you basically get like double the clothes for less of a price. Um, and the code is back to school. All right. Okay. And of course, Peyton, our fabulous model, give us a spin and give us a smile. You look fabulous, darling. All right. For more information, thank you for being our model, Peyton. <laughs> for more information on Hand Me Up, just head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we provided a link or just scan the QR code on your screen. Well, of course, with back to school happening, we know you probably already have some back to school pictures. I know it's, it's, I'm sweaty. Not, it's humid. A little sweaty. Yeah, a little sweaty. Little. <laughs> so we'd love to see those. Please share them at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. We might see those a little later on in the show. All right, well, if you are looking for a fun place to have a birthday party or even a holiday party, our Jen Tobias Trusky is out at Andretti Indoor Karting and Games. Hey there, Jen. It's party season, and if you're planning your next get together and ready indoor karting and games, maybe the perfect spot for you. I'm joined now by Lori Hurtado. We also have Jay Quintero over here. He's going to make some cocktails.
cocktails in a bit for us. Lori, thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. So anything from birthday parties to corporate events, tell me about what people can do here. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know that we have very large event rooms that we can host a lot of different events. So we have birthday parties, corporate meetings, dinners, team building events that everybody can come and enjoy as a family. And so when you walk in, you may not realize, but there are huge party rooms of different sizes, right? Even Correct. So you can pretty much customize. Would yes. You say? Yes. Yeah. So um, how you would go about that is you would get with one of our sales managers, and they would customize the event to your to your specific guests. Nice. I had my son's party here. We had a blast. Uh, and as you can see behind us, a lot to do for the kiddos, but there's also. Mozzarella, basil, uh, a drizzle, and also some tomato. And then we have our beautiful Rucker Burger that has some chef crafted mac and cheese, uh, applewood smoked bacon, I frizzled mean, onions. Look at that. It is so delicious. <laughs> How do you favorite. bite into that? I, it's very hard, but I have seen a lot of people do it. Yes. It is one of the favorites, yes. Yeah. So not just the games and the go-karts, but some really delicious food. And I can't keep my eye off the cocktails. So gorgeous. We have Jay getting ready to make these drinks. So which drink are we going to make first, Lori? So he is making our uh, top selling drink right now. That is our pace car. It resembles a stoplight for us. So, oh, that's so cute. Yes. I just got it, the stoplight. All about that racing theme. Yes. Okay, so that one is obviously a very tropical inspired drink. I see he has all the juices there. Um, yes. And so he's making that one. And then I know the next one there is a margarita. Love, yes, love. that is our Patron margarita. It's called the pole position. It's also a fan favorite. Uh, people really enjoy that. We have the ability to do the uh, tahini rim on it. And it's really, really refreshing and really nice for summer right now in the summer heat. Okay, so Jay is topping it off with some grenadine. Yes. What else is in that cocktail, Dino? <laughs> so that's going to be orange juice. It has rum. It's going to have a splash of grenadine and then a blue curacao floater on it. Ooh, beautiful. Again, the stoplight look, right? Yes. And then Jay, don't mind me. I might take that and sample that. And next, the margarita. Tell me about the margarita again. I'm sorry. So the margarita is going to be a Patron margarita. It is a fan favorite. You have the option of doing the salt, sugar, or tahini rim. Um, and it's really nice and refreshing for the summer months, the hot summer months that we're experiencing right now. Got it. And your hours now? What are the hours? So the hours are going to reduce right after summer. Everybody's going back to school, so we're going to see reduced hours. Okay. It's going to be open at 11 a.m. during the weekdays, okay. and we close at 11 p.m. 11 to 11. And the last drink that Jay's making, what is this one here? That is going to be the Burnout Berry. It's a really, really tasty drink. It's more on the sweeter side if uh, for any berry lovers. Mm -hmm. um, and he's mixing that up right now. Okay. And again, um, good to know you mentioned everything people can do here. I'm going to hand you the margarita, Lori. Jay, you did a great job. And um, in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about an event that y'all have going on this weekend, a free event. And we will also make hit the racetrack, right? All right. Awesome. Maybe a quick little drink before I do that. Cheers, Cheers. Lori. Fiona, back to you. Yeah, wait to hear about that free event, and I can't wait to see Java Jen race around that track. For more information on Andretti Indoor Karting and Games, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code that you see right there on your screen. All right, well, SA Live continues with easy to do total body workout moves to get you started on your fitness journey. And we release our inner rage and smash everything in sight in a controlled and safe environment, of course. It's all the rage. That's next.